Next up, Janelle, Janelle Isaacson's gonna bring us home. She is the CEO and founder of Living Room Realty. You've probably seen them around town, really cool buildings. And she's also just a super rad mother, human, and entrepreneur. I cannot wait to hear what she has to say. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Sean. Uh, well, after college, I took what a lot of people thought was going to be a detour on the life of success, and I started a girl's punk band named Spread Eagle <laughs> with three of my girlfriends. I was the lead singer and I played guitar, and it's not that I like punk rock music, it's just all we could play. None of us had played instruments before. The beauty of punk rock is that you don't have to have much skill. You just have to have something to say and the courage to get up in front of an audience and scream it. And so for the next two years, I yelled and screamed and sang in every crappy dive punk bar from Seattle to LA to Austin to Chicago. And this wasn't at all a detour, because you see, at 22 years old, there I was negotiating contracts, making and selling merchandise, managing a tight budget, getting comfortable being in front of an audience and leading a crowd. And like in business, I had to continually negotiate sexism. Well, after those two years, it became pretty clear that I had just earned myself an MBA on the road. And I also learned I can rock anything in heels. <laughs> Fast forward 10 years, and I started having this vision of living room realty. I was working in the real estate industry, and I could see that there was a need for a real estate company that was going to reclaim the home as a place to live, as a place to build community, to share our lives, not as a short-term investment. But it was 2009. The market had crashed, and things were different for me. I no longer could live in a van with three girlfriends. I had a mortgage. I supported my family. I had two very small children. But I had this idea, and I could not sit back down. Everyone told me it was crazy. People warned me of certain failure. They told me if I left the established firm, I was going to make myself irrelevant. I would buckle up Siri, she's my youngest, she was a brand new baby, she was two months old. Buckle her up on the way to my new office, Living Room Realty, and I'd turn on the radio, and even that was against me. The only story that played for a year was how it was the end of the real estate market. So, I turned NPR off and Eminem up. <laughs> Success was my only option, failure's not. And I'm so happy that I made this crazy decision while drinking beer with some girlfriends to start this punk band because punk rock music taught me that you don't wait for permission. You don't care that someone told you, well, the establishment thinks that you're irrelevant. I mean, that's the stuff that pours fuel on your fire, right? You're like, I'll show you, I'm gonna rock it. So I looked for a band. I started looking for realtors who also had something to say who, despite the market conditions, wanted to rock and have fun doing it. And punk rock taught me that technical proficiency is way overrated. And in 2009, when I was going out to recruit, I couldn't look at an agent's numbers as an indicator of their future success. I had to look for other things. So I looked for brokers who had a history of volunteer work or community activism. They had something to say. I've had agents that have been with me for a long time come up to me now and say, how'd you know I was gonna be so successful? You know, why'd you take the chance on me? And to me, it was clear, it was so easy. It was like, well, how many fully tattooed realtors do you know in town? <laughs> you know, how many agents have skate ramps in their backyard? How many agents are bartending the lesbian arm wrestling night? You see, you had, <laughs> true, you had, <laughs> You had the authenticity and the trust of a community that no one was talking to before you. 
and it's empowering our agents to tell these stories in their own words that is the key to our success. Great art isn't censored. And so when we have a title that comes up on our website in the morning, I read, it's a gay, gay world, or best little whorehouse in Portland, or a recent favorite of mine, Milwaukee, the blue collar Riviera. <laughs> <laughs> I look at those and I just think, yes, yes, sing it, sister. Because these, these are the stories that get shared time and time again. These stories are the reason that without the marketing budgets of our competitors or their advertising dollars, we've managed to amass more Facebook likes than anyone else in our market. The reason that we are relevant and that we've taken our sales in five years from 35 million to 350 million. Thank you. No. Rock it. <laughs> and it's hard to be punk. It's scary sometimes to get up and say things that matter to you and that matter to your clients. And we even were scared in the beginning that, you know, by yelling our truth out there, that we might alienate the higher end market. But in fact, the opposite has proven to be true. Because you see, when you're coming to Portland, you're moving to Portland, and you come to our website, and you read a story about two women who just found the perfect house with a great little garage that they're going to convert to a spa garage, you're not thinking, also true, <laughs> you're, you're not thinking about the price point. You see, you just felt like you got seen and understood. And there's humor and humanity in that. And you just got connected in a way that you don't by looking at listings on Zillow. So, I mean, I, I, I don't know, but I'm going to guess that some of you are thinking, good for you, Janelle, punk rock works in Portland. I just saw a clown on a unicycle this morning. You know, anything works here, right? And how does this scale and how does this relate to me and my business? But I fear we'd be missing the point if we asked that question because living room looks like it does because we're a mirror reflecting the people that we serve. And living room looks like a lot of things depending on where you live and how you live. Sadie's story, I love that, was Jane Fonda with her mom. In Carmel, Indiana, I'm imagining it looks like Christian book club and basketball games and the chaos of raising four kids. But everyone has a story to tell. And I have a vision of living room being every city in the world because I want to help ask, where's your living room? And celebrate that answer no matter what it looks like. So back in the day with the band, we used to end every show with this. I want to thank you all for participating in my rock and roll fantasy. Wow. <laughs> True. <laughs> and you know what? I still feel that same way when I come into Living Room Realty and I see the amazing people that I've surrounded myself with and I know that they've helped me tell the story of over 3,000 people right here in our own community that we've helped make room to live. And I'm certain that punk rock fantasies do come true. Thank you.